Let's talk about the story. It sucks. Let me explain why. First of all, and most disappointing, whereas many people, including myself, chose to ironically purchase this thing, hoping we would get a so bad it's good, so cringe it's hilarious angst vest, the story of this game actually turns out performing the worst sin of all video games. It's boring. The story is just really dull. It's not so bad it's good or so lame it's humorous, it's just so boring that it's impossible to even care. The scenario of this game has like no... I don't want to say it doesn't have a plot, because it does, but there's no focus. Yeah, there's no focus. If I remember correctly, I Am Not Starfire had this exact same problem. The story is kind of just neandering through Fang's mundane ass life, and you're kind of just expected to care. This is actually a very common problem with high school type stories and movies and stuff. The creators of these types of media don't actually know how to tell stories, so as a result, they're kind of just making glorified self-insert type things like I Am Not Starfire and or unintentional slice of life tales like Boyfriend. Friends. Goodbye Volcano High does not, or at the very least should not, have this issue. The title and setting of this game quite literally have a conflict integrated into the story. It's a world of mutant pastel dinosaur furries, and there's a meteor coming to wipe them all the hell out. That's why it's called Goodbye Volcano High. You would figure, what with the conflict being literal impending doom and all, that this would affect the world and narrative of this garbage game very heavily. But, uh, of course not, because that would require actually competent storytellers. Yeah, so, um, quick spoiler, that meteor, yeah, it, it doesn't actually show up in the game. Ever. In fact, people barely even react to the idea that there is a meteor coming to touch down on their world. Y you don't see people talking about it as if it's a serious threat outside of witnessing random text. You don't see people losing their mind out on the streets or anything. Y you don't see how it affects the world at all. Because it really doesn't. Look at Fang talk about this meteor like it's just a minor inconvenience and not a literal civilization-ending threat. I can't focus on anything like I used to with this stupid meteor. It's making everyone act so weird. Probably won't even hit us. It's vaguely hinted at at the end of this video game, but that's basically it. Essentially, the world-ending threat to this video game story is treated less like a planet-destroying threat and more like a Skyrim side quest. It's there, but you can completely ignore it without any consequence whatsoever. And I know what you're thinking. That is incredible amounts of false advertising considering the fact that the stupid meteor is the only form of an antagonistic force that would require urgency, and piled on top of that, the fact that if if this meteor isn't relevant at all, why are these characters even fucking dinosaurs to begin with? But if you're thinking any of these things at this point, you have officially put more thought into these very simple questions more than the creators of the game did. Let's talk about why narrative games are fun. Primary reason is choices. Decisions that affect the way the characters function, or behave. Seeing a character that could have helped you at one point in a story refuse to help a second time based off of some important choice made earlier into the game is a really good example of that. And when you see things like that happen, it really does make you feel like you have an effect on this game's plot threads. That's why Fallout games are so entertaining. Well, the older Fallout games anyway. God, Fallout 4 sucks. Anyway, yeah, choices are important, and like I said, the freaking conflict of this game is literally, we're all going to effing die. You could do so much with that premise, but what we have received in this game is a narrative that emphasizes important decisions, when in reality, your choices do not matter at all whatsoever. If you look at the Steam page for this game and do your best not to laugh your ass off at that $30 price tag, you will quickly see that this game heavily, heavily pushes the decisions aspect of this game as a selling point in the page description. Decide who to be. Your choices shape who Fang becomes and determines your gameplay experience. Discover what the future holds as you play your final year in Volcano High. No pressure. Chosen family values. Get close with friends, family, acquaintances, frenemies, and crushes. Figure out how you're gonna be there for your loved ones when it mattered most. It is the literal end of the world after all. Nurturing relationships builds affinity and changes 
changes the outcome of your gameplay. And uh, yeah, now that I've shown you that, I'm here to happily provide you with the statement that is, uh, these selling points are literally false advertising. Yeah, they're false advertising. Uh, your choices do not affect gameplay in any way, shape, or form. The entire plot line to this game is embarrassingly railroady and shallow. And here's the deal. This game does have all the proper elements of a standard narrative video game. A primary plot featuring Fangs slogging through her uninteresting life, subplots involving characters on personal issues, and etc, etc. You do have choices to make in this game regarding these things, but um, they don't affect the main narrative in any way, shape, or form. You see, a good choice-intensive video game offers you decisions to perform but of course, since there's always a main plot thread that you cannot stray from, decisions can't go too far off from what should be happening in the main story. Uh, that can't be helped, and that's honestly perfectly fine. However, while that's true, choices available to you should always change what you can do and how moments in that main plot thread are executed. In Fallout New Vegas, there's a vault infested with druggy raiders, and you need to come over there for like five different quests in the game. It's supposed to be a massive gunfight, but if you manage to talk them into thinking you're not an actual threat when you enter, you can straight up freely pass through all these freaks and get the quest item that you need without any bloodshed whatsoever. Not a single bullet fired. In any other game, like Garbage Ass Fallout 4, this would just be another generic dungeon that you'd need to clear and shoot people in order to get through, but since New Vegas is created by people who actually know how to make good games, your choices and the way you built your character do genuinely matter. Follow New Vegas isn't even a narrative video game, and yet it has better narrative decisions than this piece of garbage, dude. I'm not saying the game is perfect, I honestly think it's really overrated by its fanboys, but just like with what I said with Night in the Woods, it is a game that does a lot of things right. Goodbye Volcano High in comparison fails to deliver even on the very basic idea of choices. The story itself is basically an animated novel with how little control you have over navigating Fang throughout her boring ass life. Even little things like dialogue choices are completely idiotic, and the reason why is actually not because small dialogue options don't change much in the way characters speak to you. I get that, there's only so much you can do with small talk decisions. My issue is that straight up, the choices you pick during dialogue don't even match what Fang says 80% of the time. I just spent hours on homework when I could have been, I don't know, some fun bucket list thing. And we can still win Battle of the Bands, asteroid or not. Major choices are even worse, and it's not just because your choices don't matter at all, it's for an even worse reason. I'm not saying your choices don't matter at all, because fuck it, you guys all die in the end anyway. I mean, hell, like I said, the meteor doesn't even show up in the game. The reason why all your choices don't matter is because you never see the results of your actions. Another thing that good choice-driven video games do is show you the aftermath, or at the very least, the results of what you done as you've played the game. You know how like Wasteland 3 and also the Fallout games show you those little slide thingies after you beat the game? It's trying to depict the aftermaths of certain communities and factions of people you've spent time with and the things you've done in them? Yeah, Goodbye Volcano High does not provide you with this at all. The decisions you make do not even affect the way characters speak to you in the game as time passes. It's especially sad because the story tries to throw a whole bunch of nonsense at you, like transitioning and stupid romances and fan performances, but regardless of what you do, you do not see the results of any of these things. The closest this game gets to giving the player any form of real urgency in terms of nuanced decisions is the completely jarring sudden romance between Naomi and Fang. A completely out of place relationship that is vaguely hinted at at the beginning of this game, but well, these characters have no chemistry whatsoever as a result of the rushed plot moving at a breakneck pace to wrap this friggin' story up, combined with awkward voice acting and dialogue. It honestly feels like they just slapped this in at the last second to make the player feel like he has a form of urgency over the character dynamics. So, you have two choices to make in this. 
One, say, I like you back a lot. Or two, say, nah, bro, let's just, just be friends. In any other game, this would be a very prolific moment in the narrative and would heavily affect the way said character would interact and speak with you as the game progresses. Romance is in Mass Effect being a very good example of this. But in whack-ass Goodbye Volcano High, you already know it affects nothing. Regardless of which choice you make, as the plot progresses, all dialogue don't even mention the romance as if this moment never even happened. Oh, and as for the perfect cherry on top, this game only has one single ending. Just one. Featuring a stupid rock concert that Fang decided to play at the end of the world because I guess that these individuals don't care about their own lives or families. Uh, they're all going to devote their the, the last moments of their lives to watch Fang, I guess. I, I guess that's the implication. Whatever, I've gotten my point across. The story is a freaking joke, boys. The only thing that makes this story interesting doesn't even affect the narrative of this piece of crap. So why the hell would I play it when you constantly advertise it as otherwise? And with that said... This game sucks on all aspects, period. There's no reason to play for its art style because the art style is absolute garbage. There's no reason to listen to any of these terrible songs because they all sound like they were done by some girl who just woke up out of bed to sing the songs. And there's no reason to play this game for the subject matters that it presents because it's the most generic, bland high school nonsense on earth. The only type of person who would unironically play this game would have to be one of those, well, I really don't like using this word, but the woke crowd. I, I hate saying the word woke because it's just it's such a I, I don't know it's just people use the goddamn word too much as just a cheap blanket statement for things that they don't like but what what other type of person would unironically enjoy this game it, honestly it feels like the game was made specifically for these types of people doesn't excuse the game from sucking though and it sucks on all fronts. So, let's wrap all this up in a tight little package. It took a Canadian development studio of at least 20 people over three whole years to create a choice-intensive narrative-driven video game where your choices don't matter, the narrative is boring, there's only one ending, there's no replayability whatsoever, the entire game is only like five and a half hours long, the graphics and artwork are hard to look at, the voice acting is poorly directed and unlistenable, the music is basically the same, and as for the perfect cherry on top, you are are expected to pay $30 for this. 30. You can buy Telltale's The Walking Dead for half that price. So, yeah, that's Goodbye Volcano High. A genuine disaster of incredible proportions. And despite it being displayed on a showcase for one of the most popular and successful video game companies on planet Earth, the actual title release was not a loud shout, but instead a silent whimper that nobody heard aside from a small circle of sad little simps that are on the exact same level of lacking social awareness as the creators who produced this bile, and an even smaller handful of people who just wanted to see how bad the game really was. A piece of media that is intriguing in its failure and fascinating in its poopitude. <sighs> Alright, let's go review the other game and go get it over with. I'm not gonna explain, you already know what I'm talking about. Let's wrap this up in part four. It's time for the Patreon Roll Call. My $10 supporters are Art Blocked, Cammy Bees, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Klutzy Ninja Kitty, May Kaji, Procrastinator Dave, Skyer, Sindrid7, and Stormy Knight. And let's not forget our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well, just catch me on patreon.com slash blacklightjack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.